It's a blessed brand new day, my friend. Welcome to the Jam 316 devotional hour. God has given us yet another day where we can rejoice and be glad in him because of his grace, favor, goodness, mercy. The list is endless. I hope you rested well and you're ready for this new day that the Lord has given us. The book of Psalms 103 from verse 7, he says, He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. I love that part. He is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Never forget that about the God that we serve. As we always do, let's pray as we begin our time together this wonderful morning. Heavenly Father, it is a privilege and an honor to be alive today. We embrace life with thanksgiving in our hearts because we have the understanding that life comes from you. As Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. I thank you, Lord, that we are connected to the vine this morning. And because we are connected to the vine, we have guarantee of fruitfulness, which is what you desire to see in our lives. I want to thank you for everybody who's tuned in today. I want to thank you, Lord, for the time ahead of us as we get into your word. Father, we surrender our minds to you. That, Lord, you may teach us and transform us, O oh God, that indeed we may become more and more like Christ. I want to thank you for everybody who's tuned in. I pray for them, Lord, that they will hear, that they will understand, that they will implement, and that, Lord, they will see growth in their lives and in their walk with you. Every need that is before us, Lord, I commit to you. I ask my Father, the Lord, you would strengthen us. The Lord, you would meet us at our point of need. Father, Lord, I pray, King of all glory, for peace in our hearts, the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. Despite what we go through, may we always have a heart of thanksgiving and may the peace of God guard our hearts and our minds in the name of Jesus. I pray that, Lord, you will teach us to look to you because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. I pray that, my Father, you will teach us to trust in you because you are able to supply all our needs according to your glorious riches through Christ Jesus, our Redeemer. So, Lord, every need that is before us today, be it a financial need, my Father, be it a need in our relationships, be it a need of wisdom, be it a need in our families, Jehovah God, be it a need in a career. Father, I pray that, Lord, as we look to you, you will guide us and lead us, and that, my Father, you will make a way where there seems to be no way. As we get into your word today, teach us and give us understanding. My Father, Lord, I pray that even as the word is like a mirror, as we get into the word today, may we see ourselves where we are and where we ought to be. I pray that, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you will strengthen us to be able to move forward in our faith and in our relationship with you, that, Lord, we may grow spiritually and that, Lord, we may not be stagnant. Neither, my Father, Lord, should we go back. I want to pray, my Father, for your servant this morning as he's coming again today that lord you will use him for your glory as he opens up his mouth to speak may we hear your voice through him thank you for the wisdom that you have deposited in him may the word that you have placed in his heart encourage uplift bring illumination to the hearers this morning in the name of jesus i thank you for family media and another opportunity we have today of keeping jesus on the airwaves i pray my father that lord in everything we do today Give us the strength, O oh God, to represent the truth, to stand firm, O oh God, and proclaim the gospel of peace that each and every human being needs to hear. I want to thank you for this nation. I pray for the peace of this nation. I pray for our leaders, Jehovah God. Lead them guide them. May they learn to hear your voice. May they learn humility. May the fear of God consume them. I pray, my Father, for this nation that you will bind us together, that, Lord, we will love one another, that this nation would grow and prosper. Father, Lord, even the problems that we are facing as a nation, the challenges that are before us, I pray, for courage and wisdom, to do the right thing to overcome them. I pray for the church of Jesus Christ in Kenya. Father, Lord, may we continue to be the salt and the light. May we continue to 
love one another. By this will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. As the body of Christ, may we arise in love. May we arise in boldness to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. May we be ambassadors, good ambassadors of the heavenly kingdom. And my Father, I pray that indeed we will not put your name to shame. We thank you. We honor you. We give you praise in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. What a wonderful God we serve. And uh, this morning we are rejoicing because he has blessed us with a brand new day. And as always, as we begin a new day, I always ask you, what scripture are you standing on to provoke you, to remind you to read the word today? Even if it is just one verse, read something today. Isaac and Kinangop, you are tuned in today. Gertrude in Westlands, John 16, 24 to 33. Thomas Oguea, good morning, sir, and how are you doing? Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 4 uh, is your scripture today. Edward Tay, all the way in Kisumu, good morning to you too. You say you are really blessed by yesterday's teaching on assurance of salvation. It has made me realize the power of Christ's sacrifice on our behalf. And you say you're looking forward to today, Asante Sana. Akisa, good morning and how are you? Galatians 5.1, Januarius in Nakuru, ready for the fellowship today. Dorothy in Rongai, you're anchored on Galatians 6 and 14. We appreciate your company. Lynette, Karibu Sana, good to hear from you. And then I have got Miriam in Mombasa. You say you're already tuned in. Our international crew, Modoni from Qatar, how are you doing? Matthew 6, 9 through to 13 is your scripture. Mamambulai is tuned in, Habakkuk 2, 3 and 4. John Gidanga in Nakuru, Philippians 4, 6. Njoroge, Abari and Joro Asubuye Leo. Good to hear from you, as always, Psalms 95, 6 through 8. Daniel Modeki, Karibu Sana. Rosalia from Gong. Psalms 42 is your scripture. My name's Sik Martin. Thank you for tuning in. Colossians 3.12 is your scripture. Our head ashes, Joe and Margaret in Nakuru. Thanking God for this new day, waiting for the devotion. And on SMS, as always, we have Jackie Cheriro from Langata, Deuteronomy 28.12. And uh, who are we waiting for today? We are waiting for Maggie from Sunai State. You have not sent in your message. If you're tuned in, via Facebook or via YouTube, Kama Kawaida, in the comments section, uh, section let us know uh, where you're tuned in from and also the scripture that you are standing on this morning and that will be a blessing. Yesterday we kicked off a series we are calling Blessed Assurance and we are looking at important things we need to be assured of as believers. Yesterday we talked about assurance of salvation. Are you assured? That you are born again? Are you assured that you, you are headed to heaven? Are you assured that uh, you will spend eternity with Christ? You need to be assured. And yesterday we touched on that. Today we want to get into prayer and talk about the assurance of answered prayer. Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 5 verses 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. I don't know, have you ever been at a place where you feel like God is not listening to your prayers? God is quickly attending to them. It's like your prayers are still at the reception and the receptionist went for lunch and they haven't come back. So they are just there on the tray and God has no idea they are there. And sometimes it gets so heavy on our spirits and on our souls that we even say, and sometimes we give up on prayer. I don't know whether you've been there. I've been there where I feel like God is not listening to me anymore. Maybe he's too busy. Maybe I've disappointed him enough times. And he's done with me and uh, he's not hearing my prayers anymore. We need the assurance that God hears prayer. Mchungaji yuko hapa. Pastor Michael Mitao, how are you doing? And thank you. Good morning, Karim, James. Morning, how are you? Salama sana. It's good to have you this week. Thank you, same. Remind us one yeah. or two things we discussed yesterday as we talked about the assurance of salvation. Well, uh, 
the sense of you know if Christ has said mm. <coughs> that you are saved yeah. then you are saved then you are saved uh, we are putting our faith in his statements mm. not in our feelings not in our own assessments yes it is what scripture says the assurance is drawn from the god who does not lie mm -hmm. but you know I, th th I was thinking yesterday something else that we should have mentioned probably yeah. forgot yeah on my part and that is there is also no substitute to your own experience your own testimony and witness mm -hmm. the guy who was although it's not a one to one uh, 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 um, what is it? it it doesn't match exactly that but remember the guy who was born blind yes and he was restored yes uh, sight and the pharisees are busy interrogating him mm. to ask were you really born blind we need to figure out whether this is true yeah and he says you know after the whole you know back and forth he says look this is what i know mm. i was blind and now nice. i see yeah so i don't know about you and your jesus mm -hmm. uh, interpretation yeah, whether this is a man of sin. No, yeah. yeah what i know is that somebody has touched my life and yeah. given me sight yeah. same thing with salvation mm -hmm those who have been freed up from addictions and those who've been freed up from a life of sin and mm. have been delivered from uh, what they once were and they can literally say this is the power of god because yes. i had tried everything else yes i've gone for therapy i've gone for i've tried all sorts of techniques mm. and gimmicks to be transformed but when i accepted christ yes when i got saved my whole life was fixed by this relationship mm -hmm. that is somebody who even if they come across you know an atheist or one of these people who say oh the bible how can we be sure it's yeah. it was written in egypt all those things mm. that, that witness is like i don't know about those things what i know is that i was dead and now i am alive, now I, am alive. I was lost and now i'm found so mm -hmm. there's also no substitute to personal experience True. it's one of the ways also to be sure that you're that born you again. Born it's again. just that witness. I have this life inside of me mm -hmm. that has changed me. You know, when you say that, I think there sometimes we go through uh, situations and how you respond to it shocks you. Mm -hmm. You're thinking like, truly I'm born again. Yes. Because the me that I remember would not have reacted would like not this. Have reacted like this. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, things would have been escalating <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> yes. But I'm so calm, I'm so at peace. Mm. Truly something happened yes. to me. Yes. Yes. There's that inner witness. Yes. And and, yes. and I love that. You know, you remember this question from yesterday mm -hmm. about backsliding and yeah. all that. I yeah. thought maybe we can answer it, but also Yes. Sometimes people struggle mm -hmm. to have the assurance yeah. that their sin is forgiven. Yes. Kuna to them be, ah. Yeah, and then there's and the one. And then the there are those one. that, the you big know, one. the big one. Yeah. And especially if people get to know about it. Yes. You know, you've fallen into sexual sin. Yeah. You stole money from your company, just mm. something. Mm. And you go to God and you repent and you cry out to God. But yeah. it's almost like you're expecting punishment. Mm. This sin was too big. Yeah. God can't just say I've forgiven you. No. Yeah. I need to pay for it. Yeah. 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 And whatever you go through, you yeah. interpret it from mm. the lens of that sin. Yeah. God is punishing me because yeah. of that. Yeah. Maybe you can you can yeah, say so something. Yeah, so quickly quickly for that is 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 that I think for our listeners mm. sinning is not the same as backsliding. Backsliding is an actual it's an actually serious thing it is the actual turning away from the lord to say i'm deliberately making the choice mm -hmm. the same way you made a choice to be born again backsliding involves you literally saying i am actually walking away from this and we see scripture talking about you know paul saying that in the last days there will be a turning away from, mm, the faith. from the faith people will say i no longer follow after christ i have turned from him as in you deliberately i say i am i am reversing my decision I am saying this will no longer be a walk I will make with the Lord for whatever reason mm. it is that you have decided to mm. do so. And Paul saying that will increasingly be so. Mm -hmm. And I probably know maybe in your own experience you know people who yeah. many years oh, ago yeah. you walked with in the and now are telling you to your face I that Christianity thing I am done with it. Mm -hmm. That's what backsliding is. It is not mm. the sense of I have now stumbled and fallen and I have made a mistake. 
and now I am all torn up by my sin mm -hmm. and I am grieving over what I've had. So look at David and the experience he had. Yes. You know, he falls into this sin. He walks into this sin. Terrible thing he does. Terrible. <laughs> but he is, what is the word? He is uh, tormented by it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the witness of what some say, some, I think Psalm 32 and Psalm 51, when he's addressing the sin mm. that he has done with Bathsheba and killing Uriah, yeah. he is anguishing. He has, uh, he has this anguish over that sin. That is completely different from backsliding. So I think people should be... Um, I think aware of the fact that just because you are having sin in your life mm -hmm. that is tripping you up or constantly, that is not backsliding. Mm. That is a weakness that you have. It's carnality. It is lack of walking in victory. Yes. That is a weakness that you have allowed the enemy to come into your life. There is a struggle going on. And it shouldn't discourage people to say, oh, now God has given up on me. Mm -hmm. Same thing with if the sin appears to be huge. Yeah. You know, it, it's murder. David has killed somebody. Yeah. You would think that there is no coming back from that one. Mm. That one, you do not come back from Surely. that. Surely. Uh, you, do you come back from what Peter did? You know, as he denies Jesus repeatedly. Repeatedly. I mean, I've, I've, uh, people would say, you're done. Peter, you're done. If, yeah. you, if you deny Jesus like that, you're done. Three times. Yes, and Jesus will say, me, by the way, you've gone on record. You have denied me. What can I do? But he went back after his resurrection, mm. he met Peter mm. and restored him. Yeah. So uh, people should be encouraged that there's always forgiveness for as long as there is a conviction of the Spirit in your heart. Mm -hmm. Turn to the Lord like we were saying yesterday. God is saying, come. Yeah. Come. And I think sometimes uh, we the believers mm -hmm. become the source of discouragement yeah. for people who find themselves mm. in that kind of a yeah. situation. Yeah. Uh, Somebody got born again, we rejoiced, we are walking with them, mm. and then we look at Yeah. Then you, 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 rail, yeah, you rail on him. You rail on him big time. Mm. You know, or, mm. you know, these young people, they got born again, you've been doing ministry with them, they've yeah. been growing in the faith. Yeah. Yeah. Yani, you have, you're so hopeful. These guys, Yani, they have such a heart for ministry, mm. and then you hear they are sleeping together. Yes. Then you're thinking, mm. you know, there are those sins we yeah. want to ex excommunicate people yes. from the church. Yes. And be, instead of restoring people, yeah. we forget we've been given a ministry of restoration. Yes. And we become so harsh with them. Mm. And I know mm. people who've walked away from the church yeah. because of situations like yeah. that. They felt so condemned and mm. so unloved. Yeah. They said, let me go back to the people who just loved me for who I am. Yes. And they went back into the yeah. world. Yeah. And so true. Mm. And, and I think we need the spirit of God, especially for those of us who are ministers. Yes. Because there is a place for rebuking sin, but mm -hmm. there is also time to forgive. There is also a place for forgiveness. Yeah. And only the Holy Spirit knows whether this is a guy who needs to be rebuked or this is a guy who mm -hmm. needs to be embraced. That balance cannot be figured out. Because me, I operate with moods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. If you just find me in a bad mood, ah. then you see he's supposed to be rebuked. Mm -hmm. Then if I'm in a good mood, I'm very gracious and yes. forgiving. But that's very arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Only God should be the one to say, this is somebody you embrace. Embrace this person and restore them. Mm -hmm. well, this is somebody who is habitual in this. Mm -hmm. I have no way of telling. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will impress my hand and say, this guy, he needs a scripture. Mm -hmm. Either to restore him yeah. or to warn him. I can't uh -huh. tell. But I need to come from a place of humility to say, I don't know what to say to you about your situation. It could go either way. I need to get onto my knees and say, mm -hmm. Lord, what do I say to this person? Mm -hmm. How do I deal with this situation so that I deal with it correctly? He is a, a sheep belonging to the flock of Christ. Yeah. I am just an under shepherd. I'm not the one who determines who comes and who goes. Mm -hmm. But the point is that whatever the Lord will inspire me to say, that's what I should say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that we deal with sin the right way. Yeah. Compassionately, also sternly, mm -hmm. but he's the one to direct us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, something I felt this morning as I was just thinking about what we are discussing today, mm. I really felt that we need to talk to somebody or yeah. a group of people mm. who have a sin issue weighing heavily over them. Yeah. And the thing that came to mind is abortion. Mm. That somebody committed mm. an abortion years ago. Yeah. They haven't told anyone. anyone yeah. Or if they've told people, it's very few people. Yeah. But that 
that issue, mm -hmm. even though they've repented of it over and yes, over and yes, over and yes. over again, mm. it they keep feeling it disqualifies them mm. from God using them. Mm. So in their walk with God, mm. they never grow past a certain level. Yes. Because that thing has become like a bookmark. Yeah. Wakifikapo, you know, akumbusha, lakini wewe, wewe ni mtumbaya sana. You know, yeah. you, 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 you killed a baby. Yes. How can God love somebody like yes. you? How can God yes. use yes. somebody like you? Yeah. I, I really yeah. felt strongly this morning mm. that we would have somebody like that watching today okay. or listening today and we okay. need to minister to them. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's the same thing we've said, James, all mm. along. Mm. The forgiveness of sin. I may pray, I think in the course of this week, we have that sense of uh, discussing about the assurance yeah. that you are forgiven. Yeah. But the assurance that your sin was paid for mm. when God saved you, he saved you knowing your full history. Yes. There is nothing, like I was saying yesterday, that surprises God about your sin. You're the only one who's shocked by your sin. God mm -hmm. knows what levels you can sink to. Yeah. Satan knows what levels you can sink to. Yeah. You're the only one who doesn't know what, how far you can sink. Mm -hmm. I say this to encourage such a person to say, it's true. Not every sin has the same amount of consequence and fallout. Yeah. Okay. Um, some things that are done carry a big weight to them. Mm. But this is a weight that Christ carried on the cross. He has carried it for you. Mm. And you need to keep exercising your faith and that confidence that if we confess our sins, yes. he is faithful and just. The faith has to be lifted up to what Jesus has said. Mm -hmm. I am giving you my guarantee. I am promising you that I have forgiven you this. I have released you from this. Yes. Whoever is in Christ is a new creature. There is therefore now no, no condemnation. condemnation. Mm -hmm. There is a newness. The Lord looks at you and he sees you in Christ, mm -hmm. justified, as if you have never sinned. Yeah. So this is behind you. And I think there's also a lot of support required from the church family mm -hmm. and believers to keep comforting such who are weighed down by the grief. Yes. Paul talked about it in Second Corinthians, the guy who had been sleeping with his father's wife, yeah. and he was excommunicated. Wow. Yes. But when he repented and came back, Paul said to the church, bring this person back, mm -hmm. lest they are overweighed by sorrow. They have learned their mistake, they now need support. Yes. And it's the onus of us guys who are in church to be around people like that to say, increasingly in as much as you struggle with the fallout of what you have done mm. there is a support system within the church mm. a group of women or a group of older women or a group of other women who've been through what you've been through yeah. who come alongside you and encourage you in the faith and keep pointing you back to the scriptures so that the healing can happen so that that sense of i am unworthy i cannot qualify mm. cannot progress beyond a certain place is removed paul committed some people to jail. Mm. Some of those people died. Stephen, when he was being stoned, the Bible tells us that Saul stood over him, approving uh, over yes. death, the death. But he didn't let him stop him from being the apostle that Paul became. Imagine. He said, this is what was behind me. Mm. I press forward and there's no level. Do you think there's any level that Paul was unable to rise in Christ because of his past? Mm. He wasn't. So the same thing should apply for everybody who is marked by a history of sin. Mm -hmm. And to say the Lord has restored me, and it's not just that sin is any sin, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the assurance of answered prayer. Yeah. Mm. The way you prefaced it mm. is how I want to start. Okay. The way you're <laughs> saying people who feel that God is not hearing. Yeah. <clears throat> and we will clarify some things hopefully today in today's mm -hmm. uh, because how people uh, deal with the issue of prayer. Mm. Um, sometimes it's borderline slandering God. Ooh, mm -hmm. okay. Scripture tells us in Psalm 65 verse 2, mm. O you that hears prayer, unto you shall all flesh come. Mm. The Bible says clearly God hears prayer. Yes. Where he sits, he says, me by the way, I don't, I don't black people out mm -hmm. unless certain conditions are met. And we are, I think we need to talk about those conditions at some point. Yeah. How do you end up, if you're saying me, I feel like God doesn't hear my prayer, then I will ask, do you meet certain qualifications? Because if you don't meet them, mm -hmm. God hears your prayer. It's our language that is weak, our language that is frail. Mm -hmm. We say things that we probably, if we thought about them clearly, we realize that's not what, I'm not saying that, but that's <laughs> what I keep repeating. Okay. For example, like God does not hear prayer. Mm -hmm. Scripture says, I hear prayer. Mm -hmm. If you come to me and pray to me, I am listening. 
But what is the difficulties? Because clearly, mm. there are some things that I have been praying for and they've not been coming but through. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So the conclusion so, is God does not hear. Yes, yeah, so God does not hear. Mm. Uh, but scripture would say in James chapter 4, and you know this verse, mm. you pray, yeah. you ask not, and you have not. <laughs> you ask a miss. <laughs> and God is saying, the problem is not me not listening, it's mm. you who's praying the wrong way. Mm. So is he saying, you lust and you have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You mm. fight and war. Yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Wow. John is, uh, James is saying, this is the challenge that is there. You guys are praying the wrong way. The wrong way. <clears throat> you're praying instead of you're fighting. Mm -hmm. Warring and lasting instead of praying. Mm -hmm. So, first you're not praying. So there's almost like a contradiction in those two verses yeah. he's making in verse two and three. Mm. First he's saying you're not praying, and then even if you're praying, you're praying. You're praying, back. yeah. So the substitute for you to get your answer, the, the 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 answer for the petitions you're making, is first that you're substituting patient waiting upon the Lord and trusting God for an answer mm. with your own efforts. That's why he's saying about you war mm -hmm. and you strive. <clears throat> You're going out there to say, uh, but then you know you can't just pray and wait for God to do things. You've got to get out there and get on with it. Mm. But James is saying if you really trust the Lord, then your faith will be in him and rest in the fact that he will answer your prayer yeah. according to your request. However, you are also sometimes asking it out of your own lasts. Yes. You know, last, last basically, if you just put it as a definition, it is this strong, uncontrollable desire that will not wait. Mm -hmm. I mean, the definition of last is that. Yeah, it will not wait. It will just not wait, and it is this overwhelming desire. So yes. it could be last for anything. It could be last for sexual intimacy, mm. for food, for money, yes. for power. For But the, 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 the characteristic of it is that it will not wait. It will do whatever it wants to do mm. to get that thing done. And you see many Christians who are forcing their way in. And James is saying, you, you are not going to get anything from God with that approach. With the, yeah. Ooh. And this is important, James, because mm -hmm. don't we see this in churches? Yeah. Pastors, apostles, prophets, all these people yes. saying, why are you just sitting there? Mm. Go to the prayer room and tell God what you are, and he must give it to you. Don't leave don't before leave you leave. Before, but yes. Paul is, James is saying that is the problem. Ooh. You think God doesn't know what you want. Yeah. Jesus said, before you pray, God knows your petitions. Yeah. Are you, and this is now I was saying borderline slandering God, mm -hmm. are you accusing God of being absent-minded, being disorganized, being incompetent, like mm -hmm. he can't plan your life properly for you? I've got to pray to him like he's dropping the ball. And a lot of prayers are given in that sense. Oh, oh God, when the disciples are saying to Jesus, don't you, don't care, you care that, that we, we are perish? perish? That's what they are saying to him. You can't see the circumstances. Do, don't you think you need to do something here? <laughs> and so that sense <laughs> that we come to the Lord, if you pray in that sense, mm. James is saying there's going to be a problem yeah. with your prayer that looks like that. So we are uh, disabusing one thing. The sense people say God does not God does not hear my prayers. God mm -hmm. hears prayers. Mm -hmm. Secondly, many times when you're not getting the requests you're petitioning for, it is not because God is not listening or cannot. But is uh, James is saying to us, you're praying the wrong way. The wrong way. You are using the wrong efforts and tactics to pray. If you're introducing last and this uncontrollable mm. um, attitude and this sense of like I will not patiently bring these supplications to God mm. for him to hear me and to answer them in due course. This is there's a problem with that. And you will even go ahead and now try and do your own things. Yeah. That's why he's saying you're yeah. warring, you're striving, you're killing, you're doing everything to get your way done. I say that's a problem. Mm. And so now we circle back to the verse that you started. Interestingly enough, you picked it up. It was also in my notes ah, okay. in First John. Yes. And yesterday, <coughs> when we were looking at, um, I didn't even know just right after that verse, because later when I was thinking about this issue of prayer mm. and how it can be answered, it was just literally next after the verse we read yesterday. These things you know, I have written verse 13 
of uh, chapter 5. Mm. These things I have written that you may know you have mm -hmm. eternal life. Well, what's the next verse? It says, and this is the confidence we have in him. Yes. That if we ask anything according to his will, mm. he hears us. Okay, there's that phrase again. Mm. God hears us. And we know that if he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've desired of him. Yes. So two things. You're born again. Mm -hmm. Once you have the assurance that I'm born again, as verse 13 says, yeah. we also know this, that when we pray, he hears. For any person who's born again, mm -hmm. there is the blessed assurance that my prayers are heard. Oh, but it gets even better. Mm -hmm. Because verse 15, he says, he does, just doesn't hear. Yes. He actually answers. Because you're praying according to his will. Ooh. As a Christian, you are now attuned to the nature and to the yes. heart of who God is. Yes. Your prayers are now aligning to who God is. And because of that, John is saying believers mm. have the assurance not only of their prayers being heard, but their prayers being answered. Jesus is not just listening mm. and ignoring. You know, the definition of ignoring is I had, but I did not attend to it. <laughs> he says he has had mm. and he did it. I like that. Because truly you can hear yes. and say, acknowledge I have heard, but blue no, tick. Uh, yeah, blue tick. <laughs> it yes. arrived in my inbox, but I'm doing nothing about yeah. it. Now, this is also wonderful because it follows just after that sense of assurance of salvation. Mm -hmm. That if you're justified, your prayers are heard and answered. But Ooh. what about your sanctification? In the process of going through mm -hmm. the changing into the image of Christ. Yeah. What does the scripture also have to say to us about prayer, prayer being had, answered, being given in the petitions? In Matthew chapter 5, mm -hmm. Jesus said something. In this very, you know, provocative, can I call it, <laughs> <laughs> sermon of his on the mount. Uh -huh. Because he's saying things there uh, that are astonishing. He says in verse 44 <clears throat> of Matthew chapter 5, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and mm -hmm. pray for those who despitefully use you yes. and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, and for he makes his son to shine on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. He is saying in verse 4, pray for the people who despitefully use you. <laughs> now, you are not just being asked to pray for praying? your own issues. Are you praying for fire to consume You're them? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying pray for them. Pray for them. Why are you being asked to pray mm -hmm. <clears throat> for situations that probably will never change? And I'm speaking to people here mm. who are in situations. One way or the other, the Holy Spirit has revealed to them this situation will never change. Mm. It is going to stay like this. Yes. Forever. Both. So why pray? Yeah. Because prayer also does something else. It doesn't just change situations. Mm. Prayer also changes you. Uh -huh. Yes. I like so that. now in the sanctification process, yes. God is saying to you, pray, not so that this situation changes. Because sometimes guys, when they are praying, they say, God, why have I been praying for this particular yeah, circumstance so and it has long. never changed it is because god is saying this situation will never change mm -hmm. but i am changing you so that this situation can be handled by the changed you paul saying remove the thorn from my side uh -huh. and god saying no i will uh -huh. give you grace to carry the thorn yes so blessed assurance on prayer why am i frustrated by a prayer point mm. for f the last 15 years yes that has never moved. Should I stop praying? Jesus here is saying, pray for those who persecute you. Mm -hmm. Because persecution will probably not end. But you will be able to bear it up. Why? That you may be the children of your father. Mm -hmm. Sanctification. How do you know that you are born again? How do you know <laughs> that you are a child of God? <laughs> Assurance of salvation comes from the fact that I can actually pray for my enemy. I can genuinely pray for them. Wow. Inability to pray for those people who spite, spitefully use you, mm -hmm. despitefully use you and, and persecute you and hate you. 
and it's a signal that I am struggling as a believer. As a believer. There is something. It's a characteristic missing yeah, yeah. out. There's some growth that needs to happen. There's a growth that needs to happen, or possibly mm. I'm not in the WhatsApp group <laughs> of guys who are born again. <laughs> I need to check this out. We need to out. check this out. There's something I want us to talk about. We, in fact, we were having a conversation yes. uh, the other day with a pastor friend of mine, and he, yeah. asked, he asked us this question, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that um, there are those who say... Yeah, huh? That if you pray for the same thing yes. over and over and over again, yes. then mm -hmm. your faith is weak. Uh -huh. That if you truly believe that if you pray, God hears you and God answers, yes. God does not need to be reminded. Uh -huh. You pray for it yes. and you move on. Okay. Yeah. So they were saying... If I am praying for a job, I prayed for it yesterday. I've prayed for it today. Mm -hmm. Next week, I've even gone to the prayer mountain. The whole yes. week, I'm just focusing on God, opening yeah. the door for me. Yeah. It shows a lack of faith. Mm -hmm. So I'd want to find out what you think about that. We'll, we will talk, pause right there. <laughs> Hold that thought. We'll then we'll circle that. back to it. We'll circle back to it. Okay. Assurance of answered prayer is what we are talking about this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to be part of this conversation. If you have a question or a thought you want to add, uh, Claridge Matsama is telling, is, Claridge is, telling, is telling me, Padre, it's a season for revelation. Whatever I'm absorbing today is something to listen to repeatedly. God bless you, gentlemen. You are truly blessed for this course. Claridge Asante Sana. Kama Kawaida, we went out into the streets and asked people, have you ever prayed a prayer and God answered? What was the prayer and how did he answer? Let's listen to what different people had to say. The one thing I, I asked for God and he answered. So I was sick. I was sick in last year, December. I was sick. I prayed that when I start this new year, I would feel better and I felt better. I remember when I was in Form 4, my KCC exams. I was kind of tensed about the exam, but I remember praying to God and it granted me success. I got the grade I wanted, exactly that. For prayers, I have a lot of prayers that I've prayed to God. But that one prayer that God really came through for me was early last year. When I had lost my job, I was almost getting evicted from my, where I stay. And I just told God, not for my sake, for the sake of my children, I need a job. It didn't even take two days. And I was called for an interview. Here I am, working. One prayer that I had was to excel in my KCC. Coming from a very humble background, I really wanted to prove that I could do it. And being a single parent child, I wanted to make my mom happy. And uh, God came through for me. I got a B plus in my KCC, and I got admission to the University of Nairobi. And so far, my, uh, I'm in second year, but again, I prayed for finances. And so far, my finances, my school fees has been paid all the way till fourth year. I don't know how. I, um, I live outside the school. My house is being paid for. I just don't know how. I just get the money on my phone. I, I don't know how. And every single time, I just go to God. And he tells me, you're my little girl. And I told you, I'd take care of you. And so he has been faithful in my academical journey. And I can see where I'm standing at the moment. I'm making my family proud. I've been able to interact with ambassadors. I've been able to go to embassy to the UN. It's just been amazing just in a span of like two years a lot has happened and all I can say is he answered my prayer. He came through, he took care of his little girl. To take lead throughout my year so that everything will flow according to his will. I don't really think I can narrow it down to one prayer because he has done so much and in so many aspects of my life. So, um, but one thing that he has really come through for me, I'd say is health wise. He, um, my family has had some, we faced some accidents and some sickness and stuff. And God really came through for me in that and with our prayers because they all managed to recover. We're all doing well. And also in terms of education, I'm glad that I ended up here. I've, struggled so much but he came through for me in that aspect so mostly health that really it really made me feel yes he has really done it because they all made full recoveries it was a whole messed up here but still you don't lose your faith you believe he really came through for me in that wonderful testimonies he truly is a god who answers prayer 
I love what different people were sharing concerning God answering prayers. Eunice, you're saying those are powerful testimonies of answered prayer, and you say you are encouraged. Thank you so much for your comment. We appreciate. And then uh, Isaac from Kinangop, you say, can we therefore say that prayer start with God? And then he places the desire in our hearts and we pray in his will. We will talk about that on Facebook. Uh, prayer does not just change situations, it also changes you. Lovi, thank you very much. Julia Shoy, I can see on Facebook we pray because prayer doesn't only change situations, it changes us. That one touched a nerve. Eh? Okay, good. So keep sending in your questions or your comments or thoughts. On SMS 20316, WhatsApp 0786 316 uh, Abu, to what, what Isaac is saying here, before we go back to uh, the question I was asking, can we therefore say that prayer starts with God and then he places the desire in our hearts and we pray in his will? Exactly. Okay. It is the exact, actually, the answer to the question I was going to, you had asked me before we went for the break. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Because you see, when when the insight is is true, mm -hmm. there is the prayer that is made continuously. Mm -hmm. But what is the heart? Because remember, when we are looking at first, John is saying, then we know this. If yeah. we know we are His children, mm -hmm. so you have the heart of God. You are you know Him. Yeah. Your prayer is now driven by the sense of what. Um, Christ says in uh, <coughs> John chapter 14, in uh, verse 13 to four, uh, 14, he says, mm -hmm. And whatsoever you ask in my name, mm. that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it in my name. So who is the Lord? Do you know him? Mm -hmm. Do you know his nature? Do you know his heart? will you be able to pray in that name? Mm. Now, if you're praying for something repeatedly, then I would want to ask you, what is the motivation for your repeated prayer? Because the mm -hmm. gentleman you're talking to, mm. who was talking with you, he's on to something. There's an aspect of repeatedly praying for prayer mm. that witnesses to the fact that you actually ha don't have faith. You think that because mm. you keep repeating it. The more I pray, the, the louder I, pray. I get. Yes. Mm. The more I repeat it. And that's why Jesus said, even in your prayers, yeah. don't use so many repetitive bubbling words. Mm -hmm. God already knows what it is you're praying for. But at the same time, is there an impression in your heart to keep praying about the same thing? Uh -huh. He gives the parable where he says, men ought, not, ought to pray and, not, and, to and faint. not to faint, yes. And then he talks about this widow who kept pestering yes. a judge until she was hurt. Mm -hmm. So the balance is this. Is it that the spirit is drawing you to pray and action? The gentleman who's saying, does prayer begin with God, mm. then we pray. He's spot on. Because the Holy Spirit bats that sense of prayer in mm -hmm. you. Keep praying. Press into this thing in prayer, James. Yeah. Pray for it continuously. Just keep at it because the Holy Spirit has not given you that sense of a release like this thing is prayed up now. Uh -huh. But there are other aspects where you begin to pray and now you're thinking, I've got to pester God because uh, the more I talk to him, the more he will hear me. So that attitude would be wrong. So you, your friend is right and he's saying, maybe there's some prayers that you need to pray just once yes, or twice yes. and just leave it in his hands let there be a release in your spirit mm -hmm. as he's saying to you i have heard the prayer commit it into my hands i will get round to it i think the aspect that i'm deriving from what you're saying which sometimes for some people may be the missing aspect mm. or something they ha are yet to develop yes. is the relationship yes. aspect. Yes. Because if the relationship aspect is not there, mm -hmm. then how do I know what he is saying exactly. about what I am praying exactly. for? Exactly. Because I've been, uh, I remember one time I was, uh, I was in between jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, not the pastoral calling yeah, yeah, but in between yeah. jobs media ministry yeah and i had stayed on the bench longer than i thought i would yes and i took a day and i went to a prayer center mm. and i was now asking god what's the deal yes yeah why are you frustrating me yes. you gave me a gift i never asked for it yeah you put me on a platform i never asked for it yeah now i've been taken out of the platform mm. now i've been waiting what's mm. going on yeah what's going on mm. and god told me get up 
Mm. Yeah. Mm. Get up and stop crying. Yes. You need to do A, B, C, D. Yes. And I felt like God. Mm. Serious. This ni awal ni kosa ya. Tuna mimi ni yenda ni yomba sama. Pray for your enemies. God. That was the answer. <laughs> that was the answer. Yeah. They said, stop praying about this issue. Yeah. If you do this. Yes. Do this. Ask for this. Mm -hmm. They will say no. Mm. But this will happen. Yes. It was very clear. I don't think there's ever a time in my life. Mm. In a moment of distress, I've had God that clearly. Amen. Nani mm -hmm. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't need to spend the whole afternoon there yeah. so that I can come and say I was seeking God for six hours. Yes. I didn't even take two yes. hours. Yes. Yeah. And I left. Yes. And I followed the instructions. Yeah. And exactly what he told me is what happened. Amen. But because of the relationship, relationship. aspect. So there are yes. some people who... God is transactional. It's like an ATM. Yes. You put in your prayer card. Yes. You type. It, and then the answer come comes out. out. So yes. if the answer is not coming out, yeah. you have to gonga gonga the machine. Exactly. Maybe the Keep machine it, is yes, yeah. maybe it's, it's maybe faulty. It's faulty. Yeah. So how how do people develop that relationship aspect? Exactly. Because I've had people say, mm -hmm. I've prayed for this and God has given me the reassurance. Yes. This one we are not praying for it anymore. Yes. We are starting to give thanks. Yes. And it's done. Yes. I like that question. Uh -huh. How do you develop it? It's a discipline. It's a it doesn't come overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, just like any other relationship, it is worked on. Just mm. like in, like uh, if you're going to have a friend, you will be tight because you will go through life together. Yeah. You will not just immediately become best of friends. True. It will grow. Same thing with the Lord. Mm. You're born again, you grow in that space of relationship with him. How? Reading the word of God, obeying what he is saying obeying. for you to do, so that now you learn. Obedience mm. teaches you. You get things. I think Oswald Chambers is the one who said, obedience will reveal to you something that scholars have been reading for years. A guy just obeys. Yes. And suddenly there's all this insight like, oh my goodness, now I understand it because you obeyed. So reading the word of God, obeying, and of course just practicing prayer. Mm -hmm. You get better at it the more you pray. You begin to be able to hear mm as he's also speaking to you. You were saying you went to that prayer uh, place. Mm. How you had, you, it's hard for you to explain how you knew you have heard the voice of God. Yes. Yet in your spirit, there I was that confirmation. Knew. Yes. I know I have heard from God. Now mm. I know I have heard from him. He speaks to me. Mm. And whatever happened, it vindicated that prayer. Yes. What it does is that it encourages you to keep pressing even mm. more into the other issues of your life. Mm. So it becomes a discipline over time. And so now with time, you develop that sense of, I have prayed for this thing. There is a confirmation in my spirit that that prayer is enough. Mm -hmm. I have prayed for this thing, but there is still an impression in my spirit to keep, to praying, keep praying for this thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's a relationship. So it's not a book we read mm. uh, with some tips. It is something you learn. <laughs> and you know those things about prayer books. There's a guy called E.M. Bounds, I think. Yes, E.M. Bounds. He's written Bounds. a number of books. Do yes. you know what he said towards the end of his life? Yeah. You guys don't pray enough. And he's the one who's written the Oof. books for us. And he said, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I figured out this prayer thing. Because yeah. it's not about books being written. It's not about saying, now, yes. this is the book that will unlock for me prayer. Mm. Oh. It is this relation. Jesus is saying, I am a person. Just talk to me. Over time, you'll figure out how to pray with, to me, how to mm. Um, relate with me in the place of prayer. But I will take the discipline, the intentionality. Yeah. I'll give you the spirit to empower you so that you can even pray when you feel, I don't feel like praying. Mm -hmm. oh, we, I'll work together with you, but a relationship develops out of it. Wow. Yeah. I think, I think that is paramount for every believer. Yes. You know, and the reason I say that is, uh, I'm sure as a pastor you experience this. Mm. The people who feel like Unless you pray for them. Mm -hmm. If Pasi prays that. Yeah, I'm unless sorted. you pray for them, <laughs> God will not hear. Yeah. Yeah, you have anointing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. a direct line. <laughs> Mine has to go through the operator. And sometimes the operator is on leave. Yeah. And we don't know for how long. Yeah. Yeah. It's not true. And look, we started off by saying <clears throat> that portion in Psalm 65. Mm -hmm. And to you who hears prayer shall all flesh come. Mm -hmm. If there is a minister, pastor, who is putting himself as a gatekeeper, yeah. that person is doing a great disservice to mm -hmm. the body. Because there is no mediator between 
God and man except Jesus Christ. Yes. Only one. Only one. He's the only mediator. Yeah. And he says, you can come in my name. Mm-hmm. You know, I was thinking about this in the sense of like, you know, when you say you pray in the name of Jesus, mm. and now us guys, ministers of the word of God, we have made that into a thing. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. As if that is what it is. That's not what is being said. Or we even add in the mic name <laughs> so now like that part <laughs> is not what unlocks stuff yes <laughs> that's not what the scripture is saying <laughs> it's not some sort of spell yeah. <laughs> because is it in the name the, now now sit and ask to obey mm. it is in the sense of relationship yes. mm. in 2021 and uh, i'm going to use this it might be a bit of a borderline but allow me to say yeah. this okay in 2021 if a certain la- young lady called Charlene Roto came and told you something, you'd say, who are you? I don't even know you. Ooh. I don't know you. I've never met you before. Yeah. She comes and says, Jemomi, I think you should shut down this broadcast right now. I think, who are you? You're a stranger. <laughs> yeah. If she walks into the studio right now and says, James, I, you should shut this thing, you will stop and first say, look, first and foremost, you know, I'm doing God's work here. Yeah. But then again, you're thinking, I wonder. I wonder. Have you been sent Is she coming by in the, the name? In the name <laughs> of the president. Yes. The relationships makes the entire difference. Ooh. So when you are wearing that label, mm-hmm. child of child God. Child of God. Even Satan has to listen because of the relationship you have. It is what you carry. It is the name of Jesus Mm -hmm. that he is listening to. So it's not even about you. Yeah. And this is something that has made me nervous. Because, you know, as a pastor, you keep thinking the way you say, Mm. Pastor needs to come and pray for us. Now I'm thinking, hey, I'm thinking, this week, have I been like on point? Mm -hmm. Because now I need to go there with power as (laughs) (laughs) Pastor. So I'm making it about me. But scripture is saying Ooh, it is about, about you. you. It's about the name. It's the name you ca- do you ca- are you confident are that you? you're carrying the name of mm. Jesus? Because if you are, then you can be sure mm. that prayer for healing, mm. that prayer for deliverance <laughs> will be granted. Otherwise, Tambua, Jesus we know. Jesus we know. <laughs> and even Akina like James Okumu we know. But who are you? Who are you? Because <laughs> I'm saying in the name of Jesus, whom James Okumu has been yes. discussing with me on Monday morning, on, on, on the weekday mornings. I, 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 wait, we know James Okumu, we know Jesus, but who are you, my who are you? So the relationship has to, and I have to put my faith in that name. Mm-hmm. Just as you put your faith in my name, mm-hmm. then whatever it is that you're asking, you can be sure, you can you're, be sure. you're getting it. In fact, on that whole aspect, uh, whatever you ask yes. in my name, yes. is that a blank check? Can I ask for anything? Mm-hmm. And because I've had people quote that scripture, mm. you know, and what they're asking. How, how do I balance that yeah. and what James is saying? Mm. that I ask and I ask amiss. Yes. Yet here, it seems like Jesus is saying, mm. I can ask for anything. Yeah. Can I ask God for a million dollars? Mm. It's, <laughs> the, it's WWJD. Would Jesus ask for that? That's what it means, in my name. Would I ask that? If I was standing here in this situation, oh. looking at this circumstance, assessing it, would, is this how I would react? So Jesus mm-hmm. would not do what you're saying. Therefore, it is not in his name. Mm. It is in the name of your last <laughs> and your staff. <laughs> You're just trying to co-opt Jesus in your, in your, in your thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you yeah, understand? When the, disciples, look, when the disciples, James and John, mm-hmm. did their first miracle, got mm-hmm. that guy who was lame to stand up and mm-hmm. walk. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about the fact that they say this guy had been born lame? He was daily at the temple. How many For times did Jesus years. ever go through to the temple? Many times. So why did he never heal him? Yeah. I've always wondered. So Peter and John are saying, they looked at him, they saw he had the faith to be healed, and they said, in the name of Jesus. As in, if Jesus was here right now, looking at you the way you're looking at us, mm. he would heal you. So rise up and walk, and the guy stands up and walks. And that's mm. why he says to the people, why are you guys looking at us as if it is us who's done, who've done this thing? If you want to know by which reason this guy stands up, it is in the name of Jesus Christ. They didn't start a healing ministry we didn't international. We start a healing ministry and say, it is us, guys. It says, 
if you if Jesus was here looking yeah. at this guy in this circumstance, he would have healed him. That is why he's able to. So the people are so attuned. I like that. The disciples are so attuned to the heart of God. They know that at this very moment, it is the will of God that this man walks. And now we are saying to you mm. that you may know mm. that this same Jesus whom was crucified is yes. now Lord. We say to you, rise up, walk, mm -hmm. and the guy does so. It is a main, it is a testimony to what has just happened, you know, with the resurrection of Christ's glorification. Okay. Yeah. One more thing before we pray. Yeah. <laughs> Jen Claire says, good topic, listening keenly and getting assured yeah. that my prayers are heard. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go shouting, screaming to God. I just need to believe he hears yeah. and have faith he has heard yeah. and, and, and walk in thanksgiving. Yes. Um, let me go there. Sometimes yeah. I get the feeling mm -hmm. that the louder mm -hmm. and more energetic the prayer session was, mm -hmm. the more we think it was powerful prayer. Yes. Yes. The more we shouted, mm. the more we paced around. Mm. It's like the more we seem like we've actually done some work. Yes. A yes. prayer today was powerful as opposed to somebody is just seated, they are praying quietly. Yes. You can hardly hear what they are saying. Yes. We look at that and that is not necessarily considered powerful prayer. prayer. Yeah. You are not. <laughs> I just tell you, I tell you there is a guy and I know he, if he's listened to this, he knows I'm talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> He'd put you under so much pressure. Uh -huh. <laughs> at the end of uh, whatever, Bible study or something, yeah. say, so now brother Michael is going to close for us with a powerful prayer. <laughs> You're already thinking, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's true. Mm. The, you know, volume. And, yeah, pers volume. and perspiration. Yeah. You know. And it isn't. We, last week we were talking in our prayer meeting. We meet on Wednesdays evening for prayer mm. at church. And we were reminding ourselves of the same. There's a brother in our midst, again, mm. guys in church know who it is I'm talking about. Mm. That guy, the way he prays. Yeah. It's like, okay, so we have a prayer mm -hmm. item. I don't mm -hmm. know, it could be something. And he goes like, dear God, we are praying for this issue. We know you're listening. We are to ask you that you help us with this thing. In just name we pray. Done. Done. And, you know, over time we began to think, this guy prays like he just believes God has heard that prayer. Yes, the yes. End. <laughs> like he was listening. He knows the background of the issue. Mm. So me, I'm not going to now, like, really elaborate. Uh -huh. So the Bible is full of very long prayers. It's mm. also full of very short, short prayers. prayers. Yes. It is full of prayers like, you know, the one that Nehemiah says. Yes. The king asks him, why are you looking sad in your presence? Mm. And then he says, oh, and he says, and I prayed to the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you think he told the king, right. this is what I have been waiting for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed God Almighty. You Thank know, he you doesn't. Jesus. It is quick fire. <laughs> <laughs> under his breath, he just prays it, and then he asks the king, can mm. I go to Jerusalem? And he's told, go. That burst of prayer mm. uh, is enough. And then you have the prayer of Solomon that mm. goes into verses, verses and yes. verses and verses. Yes. So it is not for your much speaking, mm. neither for your little speaking. Jesus has a long prayer in John 17 yeah. that goes on and on. Yeah. And then he has a prayer, Father, glorify your mm. name. Uh, and, and God says, I have glorified instant answer. So it is not, it's relationship. It's relationship. There are times I talk to you, Jemo, for long, yeah. and then there are times I just talk for you for a few seconds. I have produced an assembly, we need to pray. All right. Yes. We will tomorrow pick up from a place where we say it, but mm. if your not, prayers are not being answered, mm -hmm. not heard, what is it that could be happening? Ha okay. It is important that we share that because Sour. This, it's, I feel it's important. Sour. But let's pray. Okay. Our Father, we thank you. <coughs> because even as we pray now, mm. we pray not because we want to impress you with anything. Mm. You see our hearts, you hear our concerns, you're close by to us. Mm. We want to thank you, Father, for a moment to think about and to uh, recognize that um, to you who hears prayers shall all flesh come. Yeah. There are many prayers in hearts of people. Prayers that are being said continuously, even if they are not being vocalized, mm. they are going on in people's hearts. They are prayers that have been verbalized, Lord, and they have been said out loud. They are prayers that you are answering right now, even as we speak. They are prayers you will answer in due time. 
all these things, O oh Lord, are in your hand. You are a good, gracious, kind, loving God. Therefore, there is nothing good that you with, will withhold from mm. us. And therefore, Lord, we pray that we may be given that assurance of your love because it will help us, O oh Lord, to, shall we say, modify our prayers, modify our attitudes where they are failing mm. <clears throat> and to be cognizant of the fact that there is nothing that you will do that is against um, our good uh, our good uh, outcomes you are looking to bless us and to be good mm. to us oh lord and so i pray lord that if there was prayer life flagging in anybody's life just being thinking that i am weary i will pray no more pray that the holy spirit will now infuse a new sense of strength if there are prayers that need to stop being prayed for, Lord, let them stop. Mm. Either because they are not the right prayers or they are prayers that have been answered and people yes. should rest in faith knowing that they have been heard and granted their desires. Let that happen. If there are prayers, Lord, that are needed, urgent, mm. I pray, Lord, that they will not be closed up in our hearts. Mm. We will speak them forth. I pray, Lord, that there will be an assurance of prayer more so because of the answers that we shall get. Yes. Because even no is an answer, Lord. Mm. A no is also an answer. Mm. But it is you who we are pressing into your will. So that whether it is a yes or it is a no or it is a wait, it is still an answer. Mm. And I pray, Lord, that our eyes, our ears, our hearts may be opened up to recognize uh, these lives are not our own. It is your life you living through us. And so even the sense of desperation sometimes we can have as if you drop in the ball, pray, Lord, that you may lift it up. Mm. So that we say, surely, Lord, he has heard my prayer. He has answered it. He has satisfied my soul. And that is what we commit before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Tungaji Asante sana. Asante. We appreciate your ministry to us today. Mashukuru. My time is up for the devotional hour. Thank you for being a part of it. A reminder once again that we need all the support we can get as we continue to do this work of ministry. And, uh, you know, if God touches you to send something our way, please do so on our SMS number 316, 316. That's the pay bill. The account name is TBN Family Media. In the coming hour, we get into Parenting Tuesday, so stay tuned.